Hello everyone, it has been a while. I've been gone because I had a uh, surgery, as some of you might know from my community post a while back, but it didn't go exactly as planned, um, and I actually have to have another surgery at the end of this month. Between now and then though, I'm hoping to get one, maybe two videos out, maybe a few more depending on if I'm feeling energetic. Um, talking about a few things that have been on my mind recently that I've been thinking about as I've gone through and continued my graduate education. And as someone who's been really thinking a lot about personality lately, one thing that's come to my mind that we haven't talked much about on this channel, but I think is actually really important for understanding personality is the idea of temperament and how temperament differs from personality. So today I want to give you a, a brief description of what temperament is, how to differentiate it from personality and why it's important to know this difference of how we can use our knowledge of that difference to influence how we shape our actions and our thoughts towards our personality and improve ourselves moving forward. Let's get into it. So what is temperament? Temperament is the biological foundation and basis of who you are that kind of leads to personality across the lifespan. Think of it as the nature part of personality as opposed to the nurture part. And temperament is something that can actually be seen really early in humans, even as young as newborns. And we see that babies have different temperaments regarding how they react to caregivers. You know, they might be an easy baby, they might be a slow to warm baby, they might be difficult, mistrusting. These are all things that arise as temperaments very early on in the lifespan. And this temperament then evolves with you and your brain as your brain gets bigger and you develop and you become a child and then a person and then an adult and influences all of the nature components of your life that eventually lead to your personality. So your temperament is kind of your base level in certain areas that is then further influenced across your life by the nurture components and you're going to be reacting to things differently because of your temperament, and that will lead you to kind of develop your personality in the long run. Now, temperament is something that you can't really change. Now, you can react to it. You can choose what to do with your temperament and how you're going to react to the natural inclinations that you have, but you can't really change the responses you have. I mean, you probably could with like, you know, maybe like drug therapy or something medical in that nature, but we're talking you know, not about that sort of stuff. We're talking about, you know, you as an individual consciously thinking about yourself, your actions, your behaviors, your cognitions. The temperament component isn't really the thing that you're going to be able to change. Um, but temperament is a precursor and a part of your overall personality. Again, it's kind of the nature part as opposed to the nurture part. The components of what are measured in a lot of different personality systems are something that are going to be related very much to temperament. Um, say, for example, we wanted to look at Jungian psychology or the Myers-Briggs types. These are mostly temperament focused, as in you're born with a type, you're born with cognitive functions, um, and these levels uh, may change a little bit through the lifespan depending on your nurture, but for the most part, you kind of have these very set levels, especially in the Jungian systems where you have cognitive functions. Your cognitive functions are entirely temperament oriented. They are ingrained into you kind of biologically in most systems. Now this differs from something like five factor model or the big five where you're going to see more of a combination of temperament and overall personality or things that are going to be more nurture oriented in that you can kind of change your big five personality traits. You can't change your Jungian cognitive functions, at least according to the theory, but you can change your five-factor model traits at least a little bit, or you're going to be able to uh, change them to a degree that is relative to the level you're at. So say, for example, if your temperament, the biological level of your personality, predisposes you to being around the 15th percentile in introversion or extroversion for the five-factor model, uh, you know, you're someone who's pretty introverted, you can change uh, somewhat relative to that score and that you might be able to move up through active and conscious effort to like the 25th or 30th percentile. And I talked a little bit about this in one of my prior videos where I could talk about whether or not can, personality can change. Um, but the, the difference is that the underlying temperament, the biological foundation will always be there. So you can't change it more than what the temperament will really allow you to. Now I do want to differentiate and talk about the idea that you can make 
conscious and active decisions that go against your nature or your even nurture. You know, you can make higher order thinking decisions that go against what your personality may be. And I might even argue that personality is the ability to react to your temperament and make decisions based on it, whether you're acting in alignment with your temperament or you're going against it. You can have someone who's naturally inclined to be very angry or frustrated. Maybe they have a gene that predisposes them to being angry, who is in complete control of that anger. And therefore, that is not a representative part of their personality because they've put in active effort. The difference being between temperament and personality in this specific scenario is that the person who's predisposed to it, they, you know, have the, they have the angry gene temperament. I'm just making that up in this scenario. Um, they're going to be consciously battling against that. Whereas someone who is not predisposed to that, you know, they don't have a temperament that naturally makes them inclined to be angry. Their personality doesn't have to consciously um, make decisions relative to that temperament. So really, that's a lot of what's going to differentiate the temperament and the personality is that your personality is how you respond and evolve to the temperament that you are given in life. What really got me interested in this topic recently, though, is I've been thinking a lot about the idea of epigenetic changes in personality. And for those of you who are unaware, epigenetics is the concept that being exposed to different situations and environments will change your genes in some sense. And there is a lot in the biology and science side that I'm not exactly sure about how this works specifically. But when you look at it from a conceptual level, what we're essentially saying is that when you're put into environments that are very different or situations that are very different than what you're used to for consistent periods of time, that your genes may adapt or unlock parts of themselves that weren't previously being used to accommodate for that need. So let's say, for example, you're someone who is not very active and then you're put into a job that requires you to be active and then you find out that you actually really enjoy being active and it naturally comes to you. Because you were not active before, your genes that may have been towards the middle on the kind of active component may not have been activating in such a way that uh, kind of encouraged or reinforced that behavior within you. But because you were then put into that situation that reinforced it, the gene kind of unlocked a part of itself. Now, this is an extremely simplified version of this concept. I'm not going into like tons of detail about what epigenetics implies. What I'm really just trying to tell you is that there's an environment or a nurture component that can fundamentally unlock or change parts of the temperament in that your temperament or who you believe yourself to be based on your biology may not be fully representative of your actual personality because you haven't put yourself in specific situations that would allow for the epigenetic change uh, in your personality that would be um, relative to what your personality would be if you were in that place for a long time. I like to use myself when I'm talking about um, this situation, and this is anecdotal, right? But when I was younger, when I was 18, I was couch potato, lazy, not relatively conscientious. But then when I got a job at 18, and then I went back to school, I discovered that I'm actually very conscientious. Like I'm in like the 70th to 80th percentile of conscientiousness, but I had never really needed to use that part of myself and had not been put in situations where I was required to be conscientious. But as soon as I was, my temperament kind of unlocked itself and now that feels natural to me. How does this differ from like a conscious change in personality? Because for me, I wasn't attempting to make that change. That wasn't something that I was doing to better myself or grow as an individual. That was a personality change or a temperament change that was brought on by me being put in a new situation or a new environment for an extended period of time. So essentially, the temperament itself reached a different level. I don't want to say unlocked because that, that implies that there's parts of yourself that are like higher tier. It's not like a higher tier. It's just something that was different that my personality and temperament hadn't been accustomed to that it could do that it didn't realize it could do and wasn't being reinforced. So yeah, really the, the point is, is that there's changes to your temperament that can be made through putting yourself 
in different environments or situations that might allow for that temperament change. Another really important thing to remember, though, about epigenetic changes to temperament and personality is that fundamentally the field of epigenetics proposes the idea that epigenetic changes don't alter your DNA in that these changes aren't permanent. You know, if you leave these situations or scenarios or you go into situations that no longer reinforce the need for these genetics to be uh, present, then you might actually lose those behaviors. You might lose that part of your personality or temperament. And one way that you could think about this in over pers personality overall is that the epigenetic changes in your personality are kind of like the capacity that your um, personality traits have to change within a specific range given their environment. So, you know, you might be put in an environment that requires you to be more conscientious and your temperament actually allows for that, maybe a little bit more conscientious than you thought you were. So it kind of goes up to that. But your baseline might not be that. That's just where you have the capacity to be. So if you leave that situation, you leave that scenario for extended periods of time, you might find yourself reverting back to kind of that middle ground. Um, and to me, I just think this is a an interesting way to think about personality and how we're uh, interacting with our self-growth. Because sometimes what we need is not a change in like how we're thinking about our personality. Sometimes we need to change an environment that allows us to... Um, change an environment that allows us to kind of unlock these parts of ourselves or at least use them more actively and give the uh, genes a chance to kind of do their thing. So what does all of this mean for understanding our own personality and how we might want to make changes regarding our own personality? Well, it really comes down to the idea that it could be beneficial for you to put yourself into situations that require you to use the traits that you want to develop. And that might sound simple right off the bat, but one way to think of it is that if you don't put yourself in these situations to see if your genetics will adapt to that or your temperament will naturally adapt to that, how will you be able to tell if you have the capacity or interest for that in the long term? You know, it's unrealistic to think that we can dramatically change our personality. Um, one change for me that I found as I've gotten older, started doing YouTube, went back to school, is that my extroversion has actually risen a little bit because I've developed assertiveness, which is one of the facets of the five-factor model. So while my social ability and the other components of extroversion haven't gone up, I have become more assertive and more willing to state my opinion on matters or you know speak up, organize, these sorts of things. And that is something that has come through me being in different situations and scenarios and discovering that I actually have the capacity for that um, and that I actually quite enjoy acting in such a way and I didn't really know that I would because I've never put myself in situations that would allow for that. So some of our personality is locked behind the fact that we aren't putting ourselves in the situations that would allow ourselves to give ourselves the chance to see if we enjoy those personality components or if our body, our genetics, our temperament really enjoys those things and we will naturally adapt to them. So if you really want to make changes in your personality, don't just think of it through the lens of, you know, conscious change through thinking about it, but also think about it in terms of what situations can I put myself in that might require me to use that part of my personality that I want to develop or change.